The air crackled, energy pulsed from the crowd. I strummed my guitar, lost in the music. Philadelphia throbbed around our makeshift stage. We were living the dream. My band, The Liberty Dives, was finally making noise. Not just any noise, good noise. The kind that made you forget your troubles. Our set list was fire. We played our hearts out, each song a victory lap. The crowd sang along, their voices blending with ours. It was a beautiful night to be alive, to be young, to be making music in America. A distant siren sliced through the night, then another, closer. The music faltered. Acrid smoke drifted across the stage. The crowd grew restless, a wave of unease sweeping over them. Panic erupted. What started as a murmur became a roar. Flames. Orange and hungry, they devoured the building across the street. The fire jumped from window to window, a ravenous beast unleashed. People screamed, shoving, trampling each other in a desperate bid to escape. Our dream gig had become a nightmare. The flames were only the beginning. From the smoke and shadows they came, shambling, groaning figures with vacant eyes and a hunger that chilled the soul. Zombies. Their moans were a chorus of death. They swarmed the fleeing crowd, gnashing teeth, tearing, ripping, feasting. The world dissolved into chaos. The stench of fear and decay filled the air. I grabbed my guitar, its weight strangely comforting. It wouldn't stop a bullet, but it was better than nothing. We had to get out, had to find safety. Section 4 Peach Preserves and Properties Our refuge was a rooftop a small island in a sea of chaos. Below the city burned, the screams a constant reminder of the horrors unfolding. We were eight souls huddled together. Me and my bandmates, our manager, two roadies, and Amelia, our bartender. Supplies were scarce. A few bottles of water, some stale crackers, and a half-eaten jar of canned peaches. And a Monopoly board. We played to forget, to cling to some semblance of normalcy. The properties changed hands, but the fear in our eyes remained constant. Section 5. Hunger Games Days turned into nights. The peaches were gone. The crackers reduced to crumbs. Hunger gnawed at our bellies, a slow and insidious torture. Tensions rose with the fear. Arguments erupted over scraps. Our little band, once united by music, was fracturing under the strain. We needed food desperately. Our rooftop was no longer safe. The decision was made. We would risk going out, scavenging for supplies. I'll go with you, Zachary. She was the bravest of us all. Section 6. Amelia's Last Call. The streets were a graveyard, the air thick with the stench of death. We moved like shadows, our eyes darting, our hearts pounding. We found a grocery store, its windows smashed, shelves picked clean. But there, in the back, a glimmer of hope, a single can of peaches glinting under a flickering fluorescent light. As I reached for it, a guttural growl froze me. Zombies. They surged from the aisles drawn by our scent. Run. Amelia shoved me aside, her eyes blazing with defiance. She threw a jar of pickles, shattering the silence. The last I saw of her, she was buying us time, her laughter echoing in the desolate aisles as the dead swarmed. I woke up with a gasp, my heart hammering against my ribs. The remnants of the dream clung to me, cold and clammy. It was just a dream, a figment of my imagination. But the fear, the loss, the echo of Amelia's sacrifice, it felt real, too real.